They don't fly on broomsticks. They tend not to be bewitched. Modern day witches are hard to categorize. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? What's up, everybody? Pedro V here coming to you with a new video. Before I start the video, I just want to say thank you guys for 80,000 subscribers. I appreciate y'all. I love you guys. Thank you for watching my videos, tuning in to my content. I got some new stuff coming out very soon, so stay tuned for that. And before I start the video, also, I want to post a confrontation I had. This conversation I had with two people saying that they were going to hex me and do this witch shit on me. But none of that matters in the end because I have Jesus. I believe and have faith. No matter what, that shit don't matter. So, just want to say thank you guys. God bless y'all. Enjoy this video. I'm taking it in, excuse me. <laughs> Who runs the world? Thank you so much, ladies, for your light, your you. message, your love, your sisterhood. I love y'all so much. We love Give you. Give it up for these magnificent goddesses. This is witchcraft. <laughs> she plays a curse on me. I'm a practicing witch. That's how I make my living, yes. And which kind of witch are you? Uh, I'm initiated into Wicca, which is the religious side of things. There's a lot to be offended by by Donald Trump, and I think you, his use of the term witch hunt is, is very low on that list of priorities for most witches, but nevertheless, it does demonstrate his ignorance as usual. The last time witches got mixed up in politics, a losing Tea Party candidate for the Senate had to proclaim... I'm not a witch. After having said she dabbled in witchcraft in high school, if there's one demographic President Trump hasn't put a spell on, it's witches. They'd rather put a spell on him. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. The witch hunt, as I call it. You know I call it a witch hunt. And it is a witch hunt. How long has this witch hunt gone on? This is a pure and simple witch hunt. This whole witch hunt that's going on. <laughs> a witch hunt. President Trump's frequent and favorite nickname for the Mueller investigations now upsetting actual witches. Seriously. They claim it's insulting to the witch community and incites witch persecution. The same as people talk about yoga, people will be able to just talk about their witchcraft practice. I can be sat in my garden with my pendulum, you know what I mean, asking questions. Yeah, I think it will just become something that's completely normal, hopefully. <laughs> Someone who's a witch is someone who just practices witchcraft and magic. They're doing things like spell work, anything from like prosperity to healing, whatever they want to do. It's someone that's in tune with the elements around them. I, honestly, someone that just practices witchcraft. It's so open. And also putting lots of stuff in tiny jars, which is great. <laughs> I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. This it came with a few toys like a Happy Meal. Just friends, just friends, and uh, he's a good man. Doing you well. well. Long time. We've been friends for a long time. Life. We discussed it. Do you think that's something you still want to do in life? Yeah. Hi, are you considering performing at the inauguration? Hi, no comment about your meeting with the President-elect. This is the President-elect of the United States. Nothing to say? I just want to take a picture right now. <laughs> Do you wish you were voting for him, Kanye? Yeah, 
still do it why are you still out here well it goes back to the destiny thing you know i made a bargain with it you know a long time ago and i'm holding up my end what was your bargain to get where um i am now Sh should i ask who you made the bargain with <laughs> with, with, with 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 you know with the chief uh, chief commander on this earth <laughs> and on this earth and in, uh, and then in a world we can't see and for the commander in chief which he now is Mr. Trump, hi, what did you guys discuss in your meeting today just friends just friends and uh, it's a good man well, he's doing well long time positions? we've been friends for a long time i sold my soul to the devil i know it's a crappy deal this it came with a few toys like a happy meal you know, what was going on in my life at 15, and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. Is I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Uh, how it came about being a lyricist is, is weird, because I started out technically, like I used to write all the time, you know, before I start uh, going into the Rain Man thing, you know. I'm a prisoner to the fame, bro. Like I'm a, a prisoner guy. to the fame. A I'm a prisoner guy. to the fame. I'm a prisoner to the money, like, and that shit is whack. I'm making so much money and I'm mad fucking miserable. The oh, fuck. Is it, is it cool we take a look at this? The last time I seen my brother, he said there was others like him. He said they were all martyred. He said these witches trying to build an army or some shit. And I mean, for what? These are all in different languages. From all over the world. It's all little kids? All little boys. Firstborn boys. Well, like, well, like you. I'm the firstborn. That's why. But Oscar was adopted. So what happened with his mom? She died at birth. My mom and dad took her. Wait, that's, that's like your mom, Jay. Your mom? Yeah, no, yeah. No. That's your, your mom. His mom no, died while she was giving... Who's this girl? Oh, these are boys, and then there's this girl. Isn't Carl's bad near here? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Allie Ray. Wait, that's her. What are you? That's her. It's Allie Ray. It says Allie Ray in the article. What was is he you? talking to her? Do you know her? I have no idea. Thanks, Susan. What is your name, son of Adam? Uh, Edmund. And how, Edmund? Did you come to enter my dominion? I'm not sure. I, I was just following my sister. Your sister? How many are you? Four. Lucy's the only one that's been here before. She said she met some fawn called T Tumnus. Petra and Susan didn't believe her. I didn't either. Edmund, you look so cold. Come sit with me. How about something hot to drink? Yes, please. Your Majesty. Your drink, sire. How did you do that? I can make anything you like. You made me taller. <laughs> Anything you'd like to eat. Turkish delight.
Do you guys recognize that? Yeah. That was an Oscar's room. It's the sign of the midwives. They're a coven. What? A coven? Yeah. Like a which is that mark right there. Mm -hmm. um, the midwives will mark um, an unborn male in utero and then they wait for the baby to mature until he's ready to be possessed. But why now? Like if, if Jesse, if our friend was marked at birth, why would the demon come now and try to possess him? Okay, you ready? Your friend, Jesse, I'm assuming he's 18? Yeah. yeah. And the other kid, your friend? Uh, Oscar? I, I think so. Add him up. This transformation, it's like, it's like when you have an infection in your body, so he's fighting it off. They'll perform a final ritual and then he'll go back to normal. But he won't, he won't be Jesse anymore. Every year, hundreds of people are reported missing in national parks and forests, many of them children. And most are eventually found, whether dead or alive. But a small percentage of the cases, some right here in Oregon, are never solved. The mystery those cases present has one man wondering if there's a common denominator behind the disappearances that have search and rescue crews continuing to scratch their heads. And we turned around and here was this little toddler walking out of the fog with absolutely no clothes on at all. Well, it's, it's troubling. Every month in almost every state, people go into the wilderness and don't come out. Stories like that are what fuel David Politis. Forever rifling newspaper archives and badgering federal agencies for public records, he's discovered more than 400 cases of people who wandered into the wilderness but never came back. Now, there are so many missing kids in Oregon, it's ridiculous. Accounts of children, people, vanishing, seemingly swallowed up by the many endless forests across America or even later found in ways that defy logic. These were unusual things that don't make sense that happened to cluster together, cluster together in three to four, sometimes as many as 20, 30 people missing at one location. He's mapped out what appear to be more than 30 clusters of vanishings in forests and national parks coast to coast. Some of those clusters and cases right here in Oregon, all of them documented and described in his two books. According to Oregon State Police, there are 41 missing children in Oregon. And now also in the movie Missing 411, releasing in a couple of months. In a lot of these cases, search and rescue or the volunteers searching people have already gone over certain areas, not once, not twice, but even dozens of times. And then the child is found there maybe a year, maybe a few years later. The search coordinators themselves are baffled by it too the ones they don't think is criminal in nature. Right now, multiple police agencies are trying to figure out if a teen found in Newport this morning is this missing boy from Illinois. With the exception of one potential sighting in 2014, no one has seen Timothy Pitson in nearly eight years. We have an update now to a story that we have been following for the past uh, couple of days. The FBI now in Louisville has released a tweet uh, saying that DNA results have been returned, indicating the person in question is not Timothy Pitson. We're talking about a 14-year-old boy who turned up in Kentucky uh, claiming to be that young boy who disappeared back in 2011. Uh, when he was six years old, he was kidnapped in Illinois. That's his home state. But now the FBI in Louisville is saying again that DNA results have been returned and they indicate that the person in question is not Timothy Pitson. All hail to the guardians of the Eastern Watchtower. And I'm the high priestess. Blessed be the ancestors. To be a witch is incredibly relevant in today's society. I cast the circle hand to hand. We kind of work a magic together. Nestled in the heart of the Hudson Valley is the Church of the Eternal Circle. I plan this purifying you. The only legally recognized Wiccan church in the state of New York. Osiris. We kind of follow the tradition of the craft of the wise. We are witches. Where for the very first time, members invited CBS2 to attend their services. My thoughts can heal. Lisa Stewart and her husband Anton are the founders of the church. 
There are definitely more of us than you think. It's estimated as many as a million people identify as being a witch in the U.S.